So we live in a fast-paced world, and it often seems like we have too much to do and not really enough time to actually do it. But we're here at the Superhuman Conference today to learn how to enhance our bodies and optimize our minds. And part of that is learning how to deal with stress. So uh, can I get a quick show of hands? Who, if anybody, has been stressed in the last month? Any? OK, maybe most of us. Probably all of us. So I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is a little bit of stress is actually good. Um, scientists call that eustress, and it actually kind of amps your body up for increased performance and more attention. Uh, it's only, uh, and this is kind of the bad news, when you start to have repeated chronic stress that you have a bunch of deleterious health effects that kind of go along with that. And so that can range from anything from anxiety and depression to stuff that we think of as more uh, physical health problems, uh, purely physical, like diabetes or heart disease. You know, Western medicine is kind of at the very infancy of understanding what stress is and how we can actually deal with it. And that means that we're not doing a great job of it right now. Uh, according to uh, uh, statistics that are put out by the American Psychological Association, uh, more than half of us are actually more stressed out than we were just five years ago. 44% of us eat unhealthy food when we're stressed out. 40% of us don't sleep very well, as you were just hearing, when we're stressed. 10% um, of strokes are actually workplace stress-related, uh, which means if your friend is complaining to you about uh, their job killing them, they're maybe not too far from the truth. So, you know, we can do better. And I think that uh, the, the solution to this might lie in a, a technology and rather a practice that's actually very old. And so what I want to introduce and talk to you guys about today is what's known as calming technology, which is a, coined, a term that was coined by uh, Nima Morveji, who uh, runs a calming technology lab at Stanford University. So what calming technology essentially does is take cues from meditation, these ancient practices that have been around for thousands of years, and tries to turn them into repeatable technological uh, solutions and tools that we can all use in the modern world. As was mentioned uh, before I walked out, I'm a recovering neuroscientist. So what we used to study uh, in the lab was meditation. So we'd have these people who have been uh, meditators for you know, 10, 20, sometimes 30 years, come into the lab, and we'd scan their brains to see, well, what's changing? Um, and it turns out then, uh, even if you haven't really learned meditation before, say, um, someone in the audience today, and maybe you've been thinking about it or, or you've heard of it, but you've never really tried it, uh, just eight weeks of practicing meditation can lead to uh, serious reductions in your stress and your anxiety, as well as changes in your brain. And this is something that was kind of, uh, kind of a, a a bombshell uh, in, terms of, in terms of the scientific world because meditation we traditionally kind of think of as being um, a tool that's really from the past, whereas now I think what we're seeing is that science is actually showing us that these things have real, measurable, tangible benefits. So another thing that meditation does is change uh, a biomeasure of stress that's called HRV, or heart rate variability. So I want you guys to remember this because we're going to come back to it in a couple seconds uh, it, uh, later in the talk, but HRV uh, is essentially the variation between one heartbeat and the next. So it's something that you can't really pick up on your own. Uh, if you're kind of measuring your pulse, it's hard to tell. But there are tiny little millisecond time scale differences from one heartbeat um, to another, and that's what's known as heart rate variability, or HRV. So that's all great, right? Meditation seems like it helps, uh, but how are we going to actually use it in our own lives? And we live in a world full of smartphones and the internet, and at some point, we have to ask ourselves, is something from 2,000 years ago, where people went to the top of a mountain to learn how to meditate for 10 years really going to help us in this world that we live in today? And so that's the question that myself and uh, some of my friends kind of asked ourselves, can we redesign meditation and, and the training around meditation for the 21st century? And so we took a journey uh, to the Himalayan mountains for almost a year, uh, living with these monks um, who have spent their whole life meditating, kind of recording their brainwaves, their body, and understanding what exactly the secret of meditation truly was and that resulted in uh, the LEAF, which is a smart patch that uh, we launched on Kickstarter this year in January. And what the LEAF does is essentially teaches you to learn how to meditate in a way that's both simple, straightforward, but also kind of a skill. 
So oftentimes we think of technology as being uh, the source of stress, right? More notifications, more email, more stuff to do, but uh, this is kind of a new formulation of technology. And what it's allowing you to do is essentially peer into your own body to become aware of what's happening inside of yourself and then learn how to self-regulate or change what's, well, what's happening. So this is kind of the nuts and bolts of, of the leaf. It's a patch, it's measuring your heart rate variability, your HRV, which we talked about before, which is kind of this key biomarker of stress. And when you start to feel very stressed out, you can kind of see here, uh, it's kind of a thin variation. When your heart rate variability is kind of in a narrow band, that's a bad sign, it's, you're psychologically kind of stressed. The leaf turns on and it actually turns that pattern that's almost imperceptible to us, right? Um, just as lay people into an easy to follow vibration. And so all you have to do is kind of breathe with the vibration and you actually are able to change your heart rate um, and your heart rate variability uh, by up to 140% in just a couple minutes of practice. So this is something that's pretty incredible, uh, but it, it leaves you kind of wondering, you know, what is the future of this technology? And the truth is we're quite early. Uh, tools like LEAF and other calming technology tools out there are really just starting to scratch the surface of what we can do um, in the space. I guess if you take a step back, you know, we, we have created incredible tools in this world. We have gone to the moon, we have created microcontrollers and microprocessors and uh, all manner of things. But it's time now, I think, for our technology to actually look inwards, for us to understand our own feelings, our own emotions, our own thoughts. Um, because we stand at a time in human history when the stakes are extremely high. There are existential risks to us, and, and part of that is mediated by our obsession with, with technology and our misunderstanding of how to use it and who we really are and how we relate to it. And so our hope is that with the advent of common technology, we actually have an opportunity to fundamentally rethink our relationship with technology so that we can create a happier world um, with more well-being and greater ease. So thank you. <laughs>